you know, I, I did hear from somebody there who actually handled the chair in question, and they were like, still a steel chair. <laughs> I mean, you can shave it down all you want. It's still a steel chair. So it's safer, but it's still a steel chair. And uh, I would I would prefer if we never did this again. Arkady interviews the outcasts. This uh, Harley Cameron, shapely, lovely woman. My wife walked in and she looked at the screen. She goes, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that story could have ended so much worse. Yeah, it really could. <laughs> I, I could have been slapped. Uh, I'm glad it just had a happy ending and uh, everyone was just well, impressed with the, the visuals. Yeah, that far, but yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Somebody besides Sesame Street brought back the word of the day, and it just happened to be Mark Briscoe. Can you imagine Mark Briscoe hanging out on Sesame Street? See, he'd fit right in is the problem. He That's not a problem. It's wonderful. No, the magic of Sesame Street is a bunch of fucking Muppets, and then you put a normal person there, and then it's bizarre. He would be a Muppet. He'd right been there with Fozzie and, and Grover and uh, who's the, 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 the Sweetums, the big scary one. Okay. This is the beginning of the summer series in Arlington, Texas at the eSports Arena. There's just this wall behind them. It was red and yellow, and it looked like a 1980s game show. I expected a whammy to come out at any point. Hikaru Shida hits a high cross off the middle rope to the floor, and Sky goes down and breaks her ankle. Minutes after, we just saw an injury on a basic move, a high cross body, and Phoenix is trying to springboard, and he slips on the ropes. I was like, cancel the show! It is cursed! You know what drives me nuts about this job? Tell me, Brian. Some people get mad at you, and then you can never say anything about them again, or people just think you're just biased and angry because they got mad at you once or whatever. Sure. Does anybody else want to talk about how if I hear one more FTR promo, <laughs> god damn, every week they have to come out and do the exact same promo. As a former Northwest worker on shows in the middle of fucking fields, I had a great time. And we would do these shows, and like no actual fans showed up. Just people that the B and I yeah, they, they, they went there to go wrestling. shopping. The B and I is basically a flea market. Exactly. And then they wanted us to do autograph signing. Oh yeah. And so like I'd be back there and you know, these people would come up and just be like, You one of the wrestlers? And I was like, Yeah. And they're like, Who are you? <laughs> and I go, I'm Ric Flair. They go, Really? And I'd sign Ric Flair and they go, Oh man, and they'd walk off with their Ric Flair autograph. Yeah. They had no idea who Ric Flair was or me. And not one time did someone go, Wait a second, you're not fucking Brutus Beefcake. What is that? Is that a hamster wheel? Is there a rat at your house, Granny? I don't know. What was, was that? In an aviary? That sounded like a rat. I've never seen one here. First time for everything. It did sound like it was in your house. Yeah. But if the light went on outside, it probably was outside. It was must have been a bird. Hmm. Granny has written up wrestling Kevin versus Solo Monday Night Raw. Who was it that came in and, and punched on Kevin? I don't. I didn't. Write I don't know. You wrote the report here, and there's no answer to that question. Wow, well, I could. Well, tell what him. did he look like? A wrestler. Mm. Ah, okay. He, he had uh, regular street clothes on. Hmm. Roman Reigns. Paul Heyman. Wow. Who would be who Undertaker? Would be? Jimmy Uso. Yeah. Jay Uso. I, that's who I thought. Yeah, okay. Jay. I thought Jay. You think it was Jay? Why don't you like Cody? Yeah. Why don't you like Cody? Doesn't like, seem to me like a very good wrestler. Do you think he's a uh, handsome, handsome or dashing? He's, no. No, he's not dashing. No. But handsome. Handsome, but not mm. dashing. Who in this room here would you consider dashing? <laughs> me. Okay. It was both Usos that ran in. Jimmy and Jay. Oh, ah. They yeah. are twins. Who would you say, Granny, Wait is the most... Wait a minute. Uh -oh. You say two guys came in? I only saw They're one. twins. Yeah. Huh? I only saw they one. They look the same. They're twins. I don't care. I only saw one. I know. The point is you probably saw them both, but you thought it was only one person because they're twins. No, I can't think of any of them. Can't think of any dashing. Can't think of one attractive wrestler you've ever seen in your life. Oh, wait a minute, uh, uh, Miz. Oh my God. I knew she was going to say Miz. <laughs> her life yeah. is just to troll you, Brian. He, he kind of. He... I the granny licks her finger to turn the page. <laughs> Lick that finger. Page be an two. unnecessary censorship coming up. <laughs> Lick that. There's supposed to be two straight guys looking for women. Yeah. Yeah. 
but they're naked, curling and admiring each other's bodies. Yeah. And you're just looking at it like, what? If anything, these guys are still in the locker. I mean, closet. <laughs> this was the most ridiculous skit I've ever seen. This was straight out of World Championship Wrestling in the year 2000. In the bad years, yes. Guys late to the, to the building. They have someone try to interview him at the hotel during the show, even though he's supposed to be at the building. His car has got the tire popped. He steals the car of the announcer. He says he can't drive in America, even though how the hell has he gotten anywhere since he got here? It's ridiculous. Will, I heard your grandma died. Maybe you can dig a grave next to hers. But you better dig it a football field away from her tombstone because that fat skank needs all the room she can get. Wow. Do we really need multiple people on the same show getting heat by talking about dead relatives? We got Christian doing it. Yeah. yeah. Nick Wayne's now doing it. Now MGF is doing it. We go backstage for the coin flip for Blood and Guts. So now we got another WCW 2000 segment here. Flips the coin, Bucks win. Bryce goes, all right. You win. He leaves. Matt spins the coin around. It's double-sided coin. Aha. Tony Khan, in this subsequent hour and a half, didn't make a ruling that, wait a second, that guy had a bullshit double-sided coin. Nope. Tony Khan was totally fine with it. He's totally fine with Chris Daniels being killed. Didn't give a shit. So, no, this made absolutely no sense whatsoever. It was ridiculous, nonsensical, and goofy. Chris Jericho versus Minoru Suzuki. Yeah. God, this is fun. They decided if we will just take turns chopping each other really, really hard. I believe the very first chop from Minoru Suzuki cut Jericho open. If it wasn't, it was one of the hundred or so that followed. I'm not trying to be a troll. Has there ever been a worse build for an AW World Championship match? Anybody? Hmm. Everybody wants to see Swerve and a Hangman for the title. They've been doing a better job building Swerve and Hangman for the title. But it is not for the title. The title match is Brian Danielson versus Swerve. Swerve does not seem to care one bit about Brian Danielson. Brian Danielson doesn't appear to care one bit about Swerve. Brian Danielson has done interviews. He doesn't care about the title. It did not feel like the first match in almost a year for one of their biggest stars. It felt like a random Wednesday dynamite match. And if we're being totally honest, not an especially good one. It was Britt's mat first match in 10 months or whatever. Her timing was off on a lot of stuff. They were on different pages once in a while. Camille hits the ring, and, uh, you know, she's like a giant. She's just manhandling Britt. She's throwing her around. And then Mercedes gets in the ring. I swear to God, she's wearing 10-inch heels. <laughs> she's the same fucking height as Camille in these heels. Why would you hire a giant and then wear 8-inch heels... So that they don't even look like a giant. That's what they did. I don't get it. Blood and Guts. It was a pretty good War Games. Not the best War Games I ever saw. But it really may have been the weirdest War Games I ever saw. This beginning and the ending, the psychology was so totally bass backwards. I left the show thinking Jack Perry and Darby Allen must be doing a double turn. Because nothing else makes sense. I wrote these words. Okada was in next. I was so excited to see how little he would do in a blood and guts match. I was not disappointed. <laughs> he didn't do a goddamn thing in this match. They tortured Jack for a while. Jack's helpless. Mark finds a chair and much like Tommy Dreamer and Raven wraps it around Jack Perry's head. Mm. And all I'm going to say is I agree with Corey Graves. Well, I agree with Corey Graves as well. It was a gimmick chair. Sure. You know, I, I did hear from somebody there who actually handled the chair in question, and they were like, still a steel chair. <laughs> I mean, you can shave it down all you want. It's still a steel chair. So it's safer, but it's still a steel chair, and I would, I would prefer if we never did this again. And Darby demands, give me a TNT title shot, or I will light you on fire. What does Jack Perry do? Yeah. Jack Perry spits at him in defiance. Yes. Go ahead and burn me, motherfucker. Stone Cold Jack Perry. You're not getting a goddamn title shot. You ain't earned it. Baddest badass you ever saw. Yes. 
And Darby says, well, we also got to end this match. You want to quit? And Matt's like, sure, fine, absolutely. <laughs> hey, you know what the problem with that finish is, besides all of these problems? There's another problem, and that is, I could be wrong here, I'm pretty sure the last three Blood and Guts matches all ended with someone surrendering to save another person. That's probably true. But... We need a different finish. I, I... Somebody should make somebody actually surrender or submit. Trey said, MSK, did you guys ever lose those tag team titles? They said, no. Frazier said, Fuck what a match that would be. They said, hey, we can still do it tonight. And Frazier said, okay. That sounds to me like they offered them a tag team title match. Well, it wasn't even Trey. It was one half of MSK. This idiot went. Well, he says it's going to be a six man. So this moron talked his way out. Of a tag team title shot. What in the fuck? Vinny, what in the fuck was this? Well. Why is everything in this business so complicated? This was so stupid. In canon, there is a very good chance that the Rascals were high. Okay. So, they made a poor decision because their judgment was impaired. God. <laughs> so then when Ren makes a cover, Dempsey reaches in and pushes her down to help her get the win. He is disgusted with this whole situation. How do you know he was disgusted? His face. By his ridiculous, preposterous, vaudeville-style overacting? <laughs> I knew the emotion he was trying to convey. That's... It was not subtle. It was not... It was not... Uh, it was very silent movie, yes. So the big story here is how the baby faces were just blatantly doing young buck spots. Unapologetically. I mean, they threw a million super kicks, but everyone throws a million super kicks these days. But they actually did the handstand into a head scissors, kick him in the head, and then did the flip th through the ropes to the apron and then a moonsault. I'm like, you are doing Matt and Nick. You may as well just be Matt Ruka and, and Nick Petrovich. No matter what I say about this show, no matter what segment was stupid, no matter what booking pissed me off, I will always defend NXT and state that they do a better job getting characters over than any other wrestling promotion, brand, whatever, anywhere in the world. They get everybody's character over. Your main event is the Rascals versus Nathan Frazier and Axiom and Javon Evans. This was a great match. This a went like fucking great match. About five seconds in, I said, you know what? This match fucking rules. I'm not going to miss anything by taking notes. I just put my computer aside. And I watched this awesome, 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 awesome match. This is no joke, no exaggeration. Right now, July 25th, 2024, this is my favorite act in all of wrestling right now. Sure. The Rascals. 